He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. You know, I have this problem a lot with the guests we have up here. People like Willie Nelson and Charlie Sheen and senators, presidents. How do you go through their whole bio and, 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 and tell people about who you've got on uh, and, and, and really do them justice? I know he didn't want to hear about himself, but Russell Means is helping to lead the charge for the Lakota Nations. Uh, tens of millions of acres, uh, more than four states. It's definitely their land. I think it should be completely given back to them. The U.S. doesn't even exist anymore. It's total New World Order run. So that debate doesn't even matter. And uh, we need uh, to go the opposite direction of globalization and world government. We need to have areas we can run to that have some liberty. And uh, the Native Americans don't have a right to this. Nobody does. He is a well-known actor from Last of the Mohicans, one of my favorite movies, and just so many other films. He uh, uh, you know, grew up on the Pine Ridge Reservation. Uh, he's probably one of the, if not the best-known um, activists for Native American rights. And we went over his bio. We'd be here all day. You can go to some of their websites and uh, check that out. He'll be listing those. Uh, but uh, the main reason he's on is because they're moving for independence. They have their independence, and this is serious, and this is real. And uh, he goes over in a video up on YouTube, very eloquent. I mean, in, in the 70s alone, 40-plus percent of Native American women on reservations were sterilized. That's declassified. George Bush Sr. ran that op. They've been exterminating them for hundreds of years, and the globalists are doing it to us, too. And I just want to commend you for all your work and for trying to save your people, who are my people, we're all just human beings from the uh, you know same planet here, all the same blood. And I just love what you're doing, and I support you. Thank you very much. Great to be on. Uh, I, you don't want to talk about yourself, but for those that don't know who you are, if they, they saw you, they'd recognize you from all the movies and television and the rest of it. Tell folks in a nutshell about your life. Encapsulate it. Then we'll get into your greatest mission, trying to have sovereignty for, for the Lakota people. Well, first, I gained my infamy um, as an activist with the American Indian Movement, which, by the way, was founded in uh, the Twin Cities back in 1969. But uh, after the activism, I, of course, went into uh, politics. I ran for uh, the presidential nomination, the nomination for president of the United States on the Libertarian Party ticket in 1988. I ran for governor in uh, New Mexico in 2002. And three times I've run for tribal president. And in each in each instance, uh, and I even went to the Supreme Court to prove it, I was cheated. But nevertheless, uh, I then entered into the art world, first with uh, with movies, then with music, and then with um, uh, oil paintings, and uh, now I'm getting into sculptures. But I'm putting that all aside because right now we have um, reestablished our nation legally and lawfully and according to international law. We have followed all the protocols that are necessary to reestablish and withdraw from our treaties with the United States, like I said, unilaterally, and, and to not only... Uh, withdraw from the treaties, but all agreements with the United States of America. And the statistics of our deprivation are, are horrible. Some of the worst in the world, like our life expectancy for a male Lakota is less than 44 years of age, the lowest in all of the world. Well, let's just boil it down. You have been under continual, total war, siege, and I want to get into your deprivation, but you ended that talk on a video talking about the private Federal Reserve and kind of a jab at the New World Order. So I take from that you understand the true nature of the globe. Uh, can you give us your view on the Global Crime Syndicate? Well, the Global Crime Syndicate, of course, are the bankers of the world. They're the ones who have uh, taken the precious metals from behind the currencies of the world so that they turn it into, uh, the currencies into commodities that can be bought and sold in wholesale units. Uh, first, you had the Trilateral Commission, and now that was even 
that was even too small for them, so they enlarged to the New World Order, which is uh, the ultimate act of, per- of uh, imperialism, to have one world order, a la George Orwell, and uh, and to control all the world's natural resources. And, and, and what is uh, all, literally, if you look at the grid they're building, it's literally putting everyone in compact city control grids, as the Pentagon calls it, literal reservations, the same way they've exterminated your people. Well, exactly. And, you know, Indian policy has been U.S. policy from day one. You know, the family farmer and the family rancher, they're the new Indians of the 21st century. They're yes. in the way of progress, which is right-wing socialism, in other words, corporate ownership of the land (laughs) and agriculture, Yes. and so consequently, they're the new Indians, they're being eradicated as we speak from the land, you have uh, your health uh, system, especially in the United States, which is directly taken from the policies of the American Indian on the reservation, your HMOs, your poor health Return your the total ignorance. It's a cover for eugenics. It's a cover. It's poisoning of your body with the drugs. Yes. Uh, The other thing is uh, education. They perfected uh, dumbing down the individual on the reservation, then exported it to the rest of the United States. So your federal schools are just exactly that purpose is to dumb down America, which would mean that people are more easily 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 controlled, just like you get the individuals off of the land, the farmers and the ranchers off the land, into the cities where you're more easily controlled. Let me stop you, sir. This is so incredible. I should have gotten you on before to talk to you. Everything you're saying is 100% from the documents. Obviously, you know this, but for listeners that don't, can you expand on this point? I studied eugenics. It came out of England and Germany. Uh, by 150 years ago, they employed it first against natives and literally to, to use the health care as the front to poison, sterilize, kill you. Now they're doing it to everyone. This, absolutely, this is their control grid. Oh, definitely. And, you, and the, um, like I say, study Indian policy, you realize that uh, when Hitler wrote about it in the 1920s, Hitler wrote and put it down that America has the best idea for getting the unwanted races, the unwashed races of people, and putting them and selecting them and putting them away into yes. concentration camps. Yes, Mein Kampf. That's exactly what he did. He, he, you know, Hitler, he Hitler loved he, reading about the West, and all he talked about was doing the same. Exactly. I'd even forgotten about that. Yeah. The, uh, the apartheid... Act, the Bantu Development Act, which institutionalized apartheid in South Africa, was a direct copy of the Indian Reorganization Act, which was passed 30 years before apartheid. So the, the two regimes that used the role model United States of America are now history, but yet they're part of the banking cartel. And, you know, it is, it is shameful that American people have been dumbed down so much that they don't even understand what's going on in in a republic that is supposed to guarantee your individualized freedom, and yet you only have, in reality, one party. But they give you a facade of two parties. It's impossible to guarantee individual liberty with a two-party system. It's impossible. I have to say this right now. Rule. I have to say this and right now. mob rule... In the United States of America, if it doesn't satisfy the ruling elite, like in 2000, they will disregard mob rule and institute their own king, King George. 